So sometimes in JavaScript, you may find that you are working with more than one promise. Now, one way to handle multiple promises is to simply create the promises and then handle each one in its own dot then and dot catch statements like we're doing here. So I've created three promises and they all resolve successfully. And the difference between them is that promise one, it takes 500 seconds to resolve. Promise two takes one second and promise three takes two seconds. Now, if I show you in the browser how these are processed, you'll see that the result of each one comes back as soon as each promise has executed. Now, this is a great way of handling individual non-related promises, but sometimes promises are related in some way and we want the way we handle them to reflect this interrelatedness. So for example, we may need all three promises to load successfully for our page or app to work, or we may be trying to get data from several sources and we want the first one to successfully complete the result of that to be handled. And this is where we have a lot of flexibility with promises. So we can load our promises into an array like this references to our promises that is okay and I can then save that in its own variable I'll call that my promises and then I can handle this array I can pass this in to methods that are available on the special promise object so that's capital P at the beginning and then the methods I'm going to be looking at in this video are promise.all promise.allsettled, promise.any, and promise.race, and each one serves a different purpose. Now, because we're going to be handling the promises using these methods, we can actually delete the individual dot then and dot catch statements because we're going to be creating dot then and dot catch statement that deals with all three promises at the same time. So let's start with promise.all. So I'm going to pass our array, which is saved in the my promises variable, in here to this method. And then I'm going to add the dot then dot catch handling below. So if it's successful, I want to just log the result to the console. And if it's unsuccessful, I'm just going to uh, log to the console that there was uh, an error. Okay, now you may have noticed that every time I save, my syntax keeps shifting. That's because I have uh, an extension to Virtual Studio Code installed called Prettify. And upon saving that formats my code, so it looks kind of pretty. So that's an optional extra just to explain why that's happening. So the way that promise.all processes these three promises is the result of all of them is returned when all successfully complete. So if I head over to the console now and try and run this, we should see after two seconds, because that's the time when all will have successfully completed, um, all of these are logged to the console. So let's take a look at how that, how that goes. Got to wait a little bit and there you can see the result is stored in an array. So now you can see the return value of each of the promises stored in an array. So promise.all is very good when we need all promises to return successfully for a page or app to work. Now, if a single promise fails, so for example, I set this first promise here to reject, then this is going to trigger an error immediately and this is going to trigger the dot catch statement. So it is important to note that it is sensitive in this way. If any one of the promises fails, then the whole process fails. So sometimes you want that when all three promises are part of a larger process and sometimes you don't. So it's up to you depending upon the promises and what kind of relation they have to each other. Now promise.allsettled is very similar. So all I have to do here to change the behavior is say all settled. So 
The result of all promises will be returned when all are complete, successful or not. So we don't have this sensitivity that we have with promise.all, but we have a similar behavior that all are going to be returned when all three are complete one way or the other. So we're still going to have to, I'm going to refresh now, we're still going to have to wait two seconds, but we at least get now all three back. And these are now stored in an object giving us the status. And if there was a problem, then it's going to give us a reason. And if it was fulfilled, we're going to get a value. So here the reason is async task one. If this was a real reject, then we'd have something like connection error or something like that there. And then that would be the reason that's given there. So slightly different format for the output than is the case with promise.all. So promise.all settle is useful if you can afford for a promise to fail, you still want your app or page to load. Now moving on to promise.any, this handles the first promise, the result of the first promise to resolve successfully only. So only a single promise is handled. So in this context, I've got now one that's rejecting and that's the quickest one. So this is going to be ignored and it's going to handle the result of the second one. And it's gonna completely ignore promise three because it's taking the first promise to resolve successfully only. So if I run this now, so you'll see that we get the result of the second promise back after one second. So this is great if you are requesting data from several different sources and want to start processing the fastest one that returns successfully and you don't really care too much about the others or the ones that fail before it. So finally, promise.race, very similar to promise.any, but it returns the result of the first promise to complete successfully or unsuccessfully and it will ignore the rest. So even though we've got a connection error here for my promise one, uh, this is going to be the result that is handled after half a second. So if I head over to the browser now, you'll see that we get this error now. Now you can see why this might be a problem in some circumstances. Uh, if a promise fails, we may not get a result to work with. So promise.race has actually become largely redundant in light of promise.any now. So the great thing about promise methods is we can access all of this different functionality for dealing with interrelated promises just by changing the method here that we're using on the promise object. So we can have, as I mentioned, uh, all, we can have all settled, we can have any, and we can have race. And this is one of the great advantages of promises over callbacks. So with callbacks, execution is serial, one starts, and then once it's finished, another one starts. With, with promises, we have all these different options available to us.